the legal outside. Yes. Welcome. It's your boy Cedric Seven One Two, and we are here live from the Velvet Gypsy, and we are here with Barely Legal, Barely Legal Tape Ooh. Volume Two dropping. Yes. Oh, we are here pre-release party. Where we're gonna ask the guys a couple questions. So the fans finally getting to listen to the album for the first time. Yes. How y'all guys feeling? What's the energy like right now? Honestly, like, I just feel like it's like a relief of stress. Like, this is something we've been holding on to for like so long and like waiting on for so long. It's like, it's like a weight off our shoulders, bro. Like, I'm telling you when that shit plays tonight, like, we may not seem the most excited now, but we'll probably be crying. Like, hey, there's been times I thought we weren't gonna get here. I'm not gonna lie. To you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think I thought this shit was impossible at one point in time. But um, it feels, this is one of the best days, uh, I can say, of our lives. And I'm super excited to close the chapter on this book, but open up a new one. Um, not only with my, my brothers, but also with all the fans that are out there. So for the day ones who was there at the Orpheum show and Ebor, shout out to you guys. This one's for you guys. And to all our family, our day ones, niggas who showed up to every music video that we ever asked for, bottled for our clothes with like no amount of money at all. This one's for you guys. After the Tony guys meet you guys, talk a little bit of pressure. Things change for y'all. How do you guys manage that going into making an album? Did you feel that when you were making the album? Did you feel pressure? Or did you guys able to block out the new worries? Honestly, during the process of this, I don't think there was a lot of pressure making the music, more or less putting it out, like really. That like he was trying to find like what songs go where and like how we want to like present ourselves. Yeah, not, not so much pressure, but more like a challenge. Cause um, you know, around the time where Daytona came out, that's when we started doing um, Rolling Louds and stuff like that. So everybody had like these expectations and like, yo, what's next for these guys? But we were more excited to release something instead of like over worrying about like if anybody's gonna like it. Mm -hmm. You know, cause for example, like that way it was um, a song we made in 30 minutes, no pressure, no expectations. We just had fun doing it. So we were like, if we could do it with no expectations on us or any like people pressure, so to say, we can do it just by having fun again. Okay, okay. And so Barely Legal Tape Volume 1 was 2021. How has Barely Legal changed since then for Volume 2? <laughs> Niggas got older. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas are adults. <laughs> Niggas got mortgages and shit. Niggas got kids. Niggas got kids. That's, 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 that's different. So like, what has it been like managing that while still trying to keep the group together? I know everybody's got their own things going on. Everybody got their own lives. Well, tell us about that. Like what it's like to make sure everybody's locked in all the time. I feel like I feel like a lot of that energy got translated into music. I feel like a lot of people fold under pressure. And if you don't fold under pressure, then you the type of person that just kind of be working through it. You working through it, still tripping on the pressure. Like you talk about it, but you don't fold. Well, it was kind of easy knowing that we had each other. Everybody was feeling the exact same shit. So like, it wasn't like nobody felt like an alienated or like nobody understood because everybody was going through like the exact same time. And thankfully, like some of us uh, live together and a majority of the time for the people that don't live with us, they're still at the house. So we just struggling, talking about how much we hate our lives together. And it feels good knowing that everybody sucks, like all that. Yes. So we haven't heard the project yet, but we're excited to hear it tonight. How do you feel like, if at all, your guys' sound has changed or have you guys tried anything new? Or, and how do you also try new things while trying to stay true to your core? I don't feel like a lot of that's, well, for us. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about other camps and other people, what they do. We don't be challenged by that. Like, by the time we made the song, it came out, we weren't so geeked up and focused on the song to where we're boxed into a sound challenge to try something new. Mm -hmm. Us trying something new is literally finding another beat. Like, we like we already did that. Next time we run into the beat with the same tempo, we'll literally say, bro, this sounds like you know, that. Now, I don't know why other artists seem to struggle with that sometimes but we we don't really have that problem the pressure be like i said everything outside of the music the music becoming natural because we go through so much yeah it's not really something we think about it's kind of just like short uh, motion and we're just always making music always working on our craft so really it's just it's an everyday lifestyle really you know, like, just gonna hear a lot of life basically like everything you've been going through within the last like two years yeah, yeah. I like that growth. I like that. Yeah, sure. So y'all had a couple of EPs that you put out. Um, what made you guys decide, okay, it's time for the album? I was going to say, <laughs> I, I was going to say Temple. I feel like that's why you got to go outside. We be outside. And Temple was saying it's time for an album. And we was like, you know what? We have been lit on EPs. It probably would be crazy if we made an album. And BLT1, 
it went crazy as far as in our lives. So we was like, bro, we gonna run it back. Plus, when we made that, we knew we was gonna come back to it. It's too stamped. It's monumental in our careers. So yeah. we hyped to spin back to it. We was we was hyped to do Daytona and all that, but it was like side quests. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's side. It was a long time to get. Of course, like the art of albums is kind of like a lost thing now. Nobody really cares about it as much. So we knew we wanted to try out doing like the whole EP way to see how that translates to bringing in fans from the collective. You know, first EP we dropped was Daytona, uh, super fast paced, um, boom, bam, bam. You get a slap with a rush of energy and you feel it. I mean, we saw how it did, it did well. Let's do it again. Um, good luck with that. The exact opposite and it worked pretty well. But we wanted to um, kind of like circle back and just gain, see what, put down the knowledge that we learned from those two EPs and apply it to the album. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're gonna hear. You're gonna hear like, um, good luck with that. Daytona, Barely Good Taste Volume 1, all Cyber even, all so much together, but more an adult version of that sound. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So you mentioned the fans, Tampa saying it's time for an album. I know you guys, there's been conversations about fake fans, people with fake supporting, but what have the real fans meant to you guys throughout this process? Because I know that they mean a lot to you guys. What does that mean for you? Yeah. She I mean, like, bro, there's so many people that I feel like we couldn't be here without like there's so many like familiar faces that i know we're gonna see tonight that are already in here that come and support us all the time so it's just right it's beautiful being able to build a community and a community of people that are coming to support like you know the cause which is us right like i feel like often you, like just as people you can feel like you're not that important but you go and do a show and there's so many people showing love and are just in love with what you make and then like that's all we could ask for bro we love our fans bro love our fans yeah, we want to try to like emphasize that within this next chapter. All like, all the fans know who are fans. All the fans who are fans know they're like real fans. Man. Trying to like, yeah, family pretty much. We're trying to establish that connection and bond with them. Stop stressing too much about the people who got like their one foot in, one foot out type shit and show more appreciation for the fans. Um, that's why we're doing like a bunch of cool shit, free events, discounted merch and shit like that. We just want to separate that line and show them is that like, you know, for the ones that stayed down when fucking Joe was 16, I was 18, like, and grew up with us that we have a certain amount of appreciation with shit like that. I, I like that, I like that. All right, so sometimes artists, when they make a project, they kind of want people to be in a specific mindset or a specific vibe. Are there any words you can give people before they hear the album or you just want to throw it on and be like, take it for what it is? Take it for what it is. I mean, it ain't gonna change and it's fucking amazing. I feel like anybody can be able to listen to this album and pick something that they like from it so just if i would say anything just go into this with like open ears you know what i'm saying very open-minded and just enjoy the music bro yeah, yeah, close let, your eyes and just let the music go. speak for itself yeah. i like it all in. in my personal opinion it's the best you know okay. and that's that's pretty much the only way i can describe it when hit yeah. shuffle I'm yeah, really nah, hit, you really hit, shuffle. hit shuffle or play it from any point and it's going to swear to god all right, man. Well, I appreciate y'all giving us some time tonight. Please enjoy yourselves tonight. We're excited to hear the album finally. And that's it, man. So thank you all to Voice 3712. We're live here with Barry Legal. Barry Legal Tape Volume 2 dropping. That's it. Stay tuned. Only on Archive. Peace. <laughs>